Hey, what's up, YouTube? Came across some insane drama yesterday while I was streaming about a game developer that is DMCA claiming their own game. They're doing it because they claim their publisher, Digirati, has breached contract and is publishing a game that they don't have the right to. Why don't they have the right? Because they believe Digirati posted a bad port, a port that has a low frame rate, a port that doesn't have all the languages that Conradical Games put in the game, and a port that for other languages can't even get past World 2. It's an insane story. Let's get into it. We have DMCA'd our own indie game. Context in this thread. On December 8th, we made a video explaining Can you guys hear that? that cut ties with one of our publishers because of breach of the licensing agreement. Because of that breach, the publisher is no longer allowed to distribute our game. If you've checked the game's storefront pages since then... Oh, wait, I've seen this game on Reddit. This game actually looks goatee. Many of you think it's just the case of a publisher releasing a bad port, but that's only the beginning. One of the more pressing points that Conrad mentions is that they are being sued by the publisher, Digirati Games, and they are not countersuing. His only goal is to remove the game and eventually get paid because they haven't been paid a single dollar by Digirati Games. Conradical has not received a single dollar in royalties from the publisher based in its distribution of the game. We will not be mentioning the publisher's name in this video because our intention is not to attack anyone, but rather to defend Fuck them! What are you talking about? Tar and feather them! You're not going to mention the publisher's name in this video about the publisher being cringe as hell? Despite this, the publisher's owner has personally attacked me, Conrad, and tried to smear my reputation. We're not playing the same game. They are attacking, and we are defending. Conrad, you should attack. You should absolutely attack. You should do that. Now, that's my first piece of advice to you. The publisher also promised that the game would release in Spanish, French, and German on the release date of the console versions of the game. Shockingly, the Nintendo Switch version literally did not release with these languages despite us implementing them for the PC version. On top of that, there was a game-breaking bug that prevented non-English players from progressing past the first 10 minutes of the second chapter of the game. <laughs> That's actually so funny. If it's not in English, you literally only get one level. Conradical is a certified Nintendo developer, meaning that we have dev kits. Despite this, the publisher only provided us with two playable builds First build performed so bad, it was unplayable, and we kindly relayed this feedback. The second one was improved, but still incredibly bad, and I did not approve it. Again, we relayed this feedback, and expected the feedback process to continue. Once I see. So these guys were doing a bad port, and they kept saying like, hey, this isn't good. Look at how our game runs on PCs. And then the publisher presumably was like, you guys are being unreasonable, and then just launched it on their own. I see. This wouldn't have been a problem if the release game worked, but clearly it didn't, as those of you who played the game experienced firsthand. Now, it's really easy to see that if I was a developer, I'd be upset. I've spent three years of my life making this game. It's really good. People are excited about it. Tons of Steam wishlists. And then it goes up on PS4, PS5, and Switch, and it runs like shit. Very frustrating. You have this potential string of evidence where you've told them, hey, this isn't running well. Can we implement the frame rate counter? Things like this. And not only did you get no response, but the game is gone live on Go Live Day, not working. But let's see what Digirati has to say about it. Oh, a lawsuit? The publisher claimed that I have made several false, defamatory, and disparaging statements. That Imagine if his statement was like, damn, this game's a stinky piece of shit, huh? <laughs> the Outbound Ghost released on PlayStation 4 or 5 yesterday and on Nintendo Switch today. I've already received worrying messages concerning its performance. I never wanted this version of the game to come out, but due to circumstances out of my control, this is the one that was released. I am doing everything that I can to get the relevant parties to fix their mistakes, and I will keep you all up to date as much as I possibly can. And we even gave proof regarding the version that I played versus the one that actually came out. Tori oh, we... they sent them a different version? That's insane. Versus the one that actually came out. Oh my god, the one on the right looks like shit. But to be fair, most Switch games <laughs> run like shit. Another instance is when I say, I am so incredibly disappointed and will do everything in my power to do what's right. Again, I don't see how this is defamatory. Anybody would be disappointed by their work of love for the past three years, releasing the state that the Outbound Ghost did. Fair. The last example for the video is this instance where we warn a player that they may be approaching a glitch point in the game, despite them <laughs> saying that everything had been going well so far. Funnily enough, this person ran into a bug very shortly after my warning, showing that my tweet was completely founded. Here's what's next. At the moment, we have not been served with the lawsuit, and we have no plans to countersue for now. As many of you know, lawsuits in the U.S. can be you should sue. prohibitively expensive and time-consuming. True. Because of this, we have decided that issuing DMCA takedown requests to the platform holders is the best course of action. In ca That's kind of goaty. Actually, DMCAing it is kind of goaty. But for now, this is all I've got to say. Until next time. 
Interesting. Okay, I understand. That's very frustrating. Ah, uh, here we go. Difficult relationship with publisher Digirati. Digirati claims Conradical Games has trampled on the contract drawn between the two parties and refused to perform the obligations laid out in this agreement. As Digirati has repeatedly stated in private, Digirati is ready, willing, and able to work with Conradical to ensure the success of the outbound ghost and Conradical as a continuing partner. Digirati said. We hope that the need for legal interventions is short-lived and this matter can be settled immediately. Each and every one of the consumers who have purchased the game, either digital or physical, should rest assured that performance issues will be corrected as found. What leg to stand on do they have, right? Oh, wait, they have an actual talking head statement. Hello, I'm Sarah Alfieri, owner of Digirati and widow of Nick Alfieri, our recently deceased founder. Wait, their founder's recently deceased? Okay, I did not expect to find out that the CEO of Digirati had died relatively recently. Some people are saying six months. And honestly, maybe there's a chance this is just a fair mistake. Maybe like, I don't know, when your CEO dies, it's harder to get things done. Or as people in my chat said, maybe they're just pandering. Maybe they're using this as an excuse. Either way, I know that if I'm to get to the bottom of this, I'm gonna have to jump into the contracts. And that means we're gonna have to get closer to the only thing in the world we hate more than Twitch streamers, lawyers. Exhibit A, the licensing agreement. Aha, this is what should tell us what they have the rights to do and not do. Developer is the owner of all intellectual property rights in and to the licensed game, which has been or is being developed by developer. Publisher is a publisher and distributor of video games. Perfect. So the developer is Conradical. The publisher is Digirati. Publisher wishes to license the licensed game from developer, and developer wishes to license the licensed game to publisher to exploit the licensed game on the publication platforms in accordance with the following terms and conditions set forth in this agreement. Publisher further agrees that any use of the developer brand features by publisher must meet developers commercially reasonable quality standards. <sighs> Damn, this is going to do all of the heavy lifting. This is it. So here's the problem with lawyers and any legal thing that's interesting. Nothing is going to matter except these five words. Developers commercially reasonable quality standards. And they're going to go and they're going to argue what's commercially reasonable. And if I'm the publisher, I am going to say this amount of money that we gave based on this timeline is what's commercially reasonable. And if I'm the developer, I'm going to say that like certain frame rates or features that in the PC game are commercially reasonable. And they're going to argue back and forth until it's decided what is commercially reasonable. And then one of them will be at fault. So he said he's terminating the contract. He is just not countersuing. This is so that he has grounds to DMCA because otherwise the publisher would say they still hold the copyright to the game. Right, but did he give them 30 days, which he is contractually obligated to do after letting them know? And then did they solve the material breach or not? Because he could give them 30 days with this letter. They could solve it on day 29 and respond. And then he is still locked into this contract. Okay, this sucks. This actually sucks so bad because after looking at the filing, I feel like I understand how this is going to end. Not necessarily how I want it to end morally, but how it is going to end in the eyes of the law. In this contract, in the licensing agreement, or the publishing agreement, I should say, where the publisher has chosen to pay Conradical Games $5,500 a month for, it seems like, a year to produce this game, there is language such as... Conradical Games reserves the right to withhold the publisher from posting unless it is a commercially viable product. There's other like kind of a wiggly words in this document that mean a lawyer is going to go in and present before a judge and say, hey, here's the problem. We pay, this is the lawyer for Digirati, by the way, we have paid them money for the right to publish this game. They have given us the build of the game as required in the publishing contract, and we are going to publish on schedule. This is a commercially viable game because we've seen the Steam build, it runs perfectly, we know this, we've done this before, and so we are going to put it on PS4, PS5, and Nintendo Switch. Now, the frustrating part is, did they actually post the most live build? It seems like they didn't have the languages, the frame rate was running worse. The build that Digirati sent to Conradical Games run, ran better than the build that ended up on the Nintendo store. So what's going on there? We're going to have to follow the chain of messages, emails, Slack messages, potentially even text messages to find out who knew what and when. And ladies and gentlemen, that's just not something that I want to do. I went to school for political science. I wanted to be a lawyer. And halfway through, I realized it sucks. So I'm going to leave you with this, me realizing that I have been doing contract work for the past two hours on stream. And I'm going to say, I hope we never have to revisit this again. Support developers. 
support publishers, support indie gaming, do whatever you want to do. Do your own research. Uh, vote. Rock the vote. <laughs> I appreciate you all. Peace.